actually the bevel tool in situations like this hates edges. Mm -hmm. And I will show you uh, what I mean by that. So if I were to go UE and turn this lot into edges, this would cause you a big problem with a bevel. First of all, you've got all this junk down here. Yep. These tiny little polygons, they are going to destroy the bevel tool, basically. If I do a fong break selection, um, I just select all my hard edges here that are breaking the fong tag. Mm -hmm. If I grab my bevel tool and I try and bevel this, you're in for a world of pain. You can see, yeah, you're in for a for a not a nice evening with that. Um, and that's because the bevel tool is like the slide tool, and it wants to slide the points up these edges. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you can see it's following the angles, and because these angles are all over the place, um, they're not fanning out, you know, equally as it were. Yep. Um, that is going to destroy your mesh. And also, because those polygons were so close together, even if you clean that up, um, that would still be a nightmare. Yep. So if we go back a few steps to where we have the N-gons, and we do another fong break selection, um, let's go into edge mode. When we bevel, we shouldn't get these problems because there's no edges. Okay. Now, what's going to happen here is that the bevel is going to go in the vertex normal direction. Right. Okay. And vertex normals are covered in detail in MUG 11. <clears throat> they are indeed. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, actually, let me go back to here. And let's just bevel this. So you can see that that works. I know, what a difference. Perfect. Yeah. And you can see that the edges, the way they're kind of moving out, are in line with these edges, if you see what I mean. Yep. Like if you look at that from the top, you can see the way that they're moving out. So if you're booling stuff, anything that has a corner like this, you want to keep the end gone around these corners. Yes, right. And you can see that I have them, you know, here as well and here as well. Now I've deliberately um I've deliberately deliberately sectioned off the part that I've balled, so I've made sure it's been kept in check into this area. Yeah, you've still got to be considerate of where you, how you do your balls. Yeah, you can't you can't just jump yeah. it in, put two objects together and ball them and think, yay, now I'm ready to bevel. Yeah, you have to um, uh, kind of manage the object that you're cutting in. Should I give you an example of that? Yeah, definitely. I know that you do cover that also in detail in making it look grade eleven, right? Yeah. Now, there's actually there's another very good tip involved here. If I do bevel this, you'll notice that I get these shading errors. Yep. Here. Can we pan out a little bit more? You'll find that on these large flat surfaces, you're going to get um, very soft shading. And this is to do with the vertex normal yep. direction as well. Now, in 18, in release 18, hold on, where is that? It's in shift V, vertex normal. Oh, you can see the vertex normals in the 18. Uh, you should be able to. Hold on. I can't. I see them, though. Do you have to have normals turned on as well? Ah, here we go. You have to be in polygon mode. Okay. I believe, and you have to have everything select. There you go. Look at possibly. that. Possibly. <laughs> um, so these are your vertex normals. 
every point has a vertex normal. Obviously, that's all covered in the course. Yep. Um, but you can see that these vertex normals here are pointing up at a strange angle. Um, that's because they're averaged, because the Fong tag is in play. Um, now, there's a way you can get around this. Uh, and this will stop these kind of uh, shading areas. You can see this is very soft yep. here. So yep. let's go back. Now, this is the way I bevel everything. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do is I get my edge selection, get my bevel tool, put it into solid mode, and I solid chamfer it first. Okay. okay. Now, when I do that, the solid chamfer, you can see that this top surface yep. stays on the of any shading errors. And that is because the vertex normals that I beveled out with this solid chamfer are sticking up at 90 degrees. Yep. And that ensures that you get no shading errors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so even on something as complicated as this, um, your mesh is still going to stay really sharp uh, on these hard surfaces. So now we go back to edge mode. We reselect the Fong break selection, which should still be there. It's kind of nestled inside this solid chamfer. Yep bevel tool again make sure we're in chamfer mode this time and then chamfer inside it wow well, yeah that makes a big difference yeah now, I'll have to put my fong tag up to get the um, smooth shading back mm -hmm. No but now you get a yeah, really, great. really nice bevel with no shading errors on your flat surfaces. And once again, no subdivision. No subdivision there. Mm. Um, so that's a proper clean result. That looks so good. It really is a trap to uh, fall into. Um, and I know, I know I did it when I first started, was to model as low, low poly as I could and drop it into a subdivision surface and then go, okay, now I'm just going to yeah. put some control cuts in. Yeah, that's a, a, a really important... I mean, you know, MILG 11 is pretty much all about subdivision. But also, but about, it's also, a very, yeah, but also about when not to use subdivision. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, sub, subdividing teaches you a lot about geometry. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, mm. and how you control it. Oh, yeah, you have to know but that. But you can do this. I, I'm starting to bevel stuff out more and more... Um, and using booleans like this because these kind of shapes just take ages to model. That's right. I mean, Do why you know would you even bother doing that in subdivision? It's just, it's just it's a no-brainer, really. Yeah. Um, you're gonna have to start, you're gonna have to sharpen all of those corners. You know, you're gonna you're gonna have so many more cuts. Um, yeah. For for what and for what real benefit? There isn't really a benefit. Yeah. And um, this should be easy to unwrap. You know, you could keep your model unbeveled and bake these bevels in with a normal map. Right. Um, you know, which would be fairly easy to do. Um, but anyway, that's a couple of little bevel tips. Fantastic. But I always solid chamfer first. I make sure that I keep the vertex normals on these surfaces at 90 degrees using solid chamfer and then chamfer inside the solid 